I'm a little nervous, you guys, because this video I'm about to watch may insinuate that the United States is not the freest country in the world. And that just doesn't sit right with me because America. All right, I got to see what bullcrap Legal Eagle has here. Original videos down below. Make sure you support it. Let's see what this bullcrap's about. All right, John Krasinski, I'm going to be inserting some history into this discussion to prove you wrong. Welcome to America, the freest country Let's in go. the entire world. Heck which yeah. Which we know is true because it's a Stars and stripes forever, say. baby. And you might actually believe that until you try to build housing somewhere or drink alcohol well, in public. Yeah. But unfortunately, America so. is not the freest country in the world. In fact, according to some, it's barely in the top 20 freest countries. What? Switzerland? They don't do crap. New Zealand? Thought that was destroyed by the freaking hobbits. Denmark, fake country. Estonia, Ireland, okay. Canada, America's hat. Finland, yeah, you guys are actually pretty awesome. Whatever. But the world is a diverse place, and one country's freedom is another country's criminal violation. And there yeah. are wide swaths of activities that are perfectly Norway. normal in countries, but also very, very illegal in America. So today, let's look at oh, some yeah. international- You know how America's the best? You got all this stuff written in English. Literally a Burger King in the picture. Countries, but also very, very illegal in America. So today, let's look at some international liberties that could get you fined or locked up if you tried them stateside. And some okay. of these foreign freedoms may surprise you. But let's start with a truly evil and dastardly product, one that actually specifically targets children. Kinder eggs? I'm, of course, talking about Kinder eggs. Kinder means children, now, right? We German? we like to say that children are the future, and here in America, the moment we find out that something puts children in danger, <laughs> cricket. legislators pull out all the stops Imagine to ensure playing that cricket. we try to keep our kids safe. And that's why America has stood firm to cracking down on a grave and terrible threat to children's health and safety posed by toy filled what is chocolate it? eggs. Kinder Surprise so? eggs, which famously contain a yellow capsule, uh, which contains a small toy, Something have to been a on. beloved staple for children around the world ever since the product's introduction in 1974 by Ferrero, an Italian company. Yeah, I could but choke in on. the United States, these toy-filled treats have been classified as dangerous illegal contraband. And some background. In 1938, the U.S. passed the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic mm. Act, which empowered what? government agencies to regulate food safety. Can have food and, and toys and the same safety thing? Regulations issued by the FDA and the Consumer Product Safety commission hey hey sale and i grew up hey i grew up on happy meals distribution of any food with a quote non-nutritive object embedded is prohibited and that includes toys found inside confectionery items now although you can find kinder surprise eggs in canada and mexico don't Why? try to bring them into this country or you risk serious fines is in it choking 2011, the u.s customs and border choking hazard he seized more than okay look at these these are babies they know how to deal with it they didn't eat the toy and choke on it come on america 60,000 kinder eggs from travelers baggage and international mail shipments more than twice that number from 2010. This caused the CBP to uh, issue a press release in 2012 warning people to try to stop sneaking chocolate eggs into the country. Quote, also known as... All right, <laughs> you know what else we got to ban? Fortune cookies. Fortune cookies. How many people die from those? Eggs, these chocolate treats may be cute and seasonal, but they are too... Fun history fact. Fortune cookies, not actually Chinese. Made in America. Too dangerous to children. Actually, it may not even be in the United States, States but they're not Chinese. US. The problem is the small plastic toy inside the Kinder Egg. While sold in many countries, this product is banned from the US because young children can choke. I mean, now some people have argued that these Kinder Eggs are not a risk to kids European are, children and Canadian kids children. Kids are pretty dumb. European and Canadian children are smarter than US children. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> now, a few months no. after the CBP released that. Okay, I'm a teacher. I know, I know. Okay. I teach in the United States. I'm a high school teacher. I've seen the kids coming up. <sighs> He's right. They would choke on him. Statement. A married couple from Seattle was detained oh, Jim at the right. border when the pair was caught with six kinder eggs from Vancouver. The couple was unaware that they were in possession of illegal ovarian contraband and was even more shocked that each egg carried a penalty of $2,500 per egg. Now, luckily for that couple, what? they were let off with a warning. But what? not to worry American kinder fans, because in 2018, Ferrero introduced a modified Kinder Joy egg. Yeah, just put food inside the food. US regulations. Crucially, the Kinder Joy is not actually an egg-shaped okay. chocolate. What is going on with this? I don't know. Okay, what would you rather have? The little toy or the whatever the heck is on the left side there? 
I don't know. It's half a chocolate egg with wafer bits inside, while the toy is kept wafer on bits? the other side of the egg, away like from the adult bit, which I guess is suitable for hapless American children. And despite the okay. few surrounding Kinder eggs, there's little evidence that this isn't very freedom though. Are as dangerous as claimed. Now there have been seven reported child deaths between 1989 and 2016, a relatively tiny number in the face of billions of eggs sold. And furthermore, I mean, I don't know. Is that just the general rate of people choking on food, anyways? It probably is, huh? Packaging warns I'm very torn that on this. eggs are not suitable for kids under the age of three and supervision is recommended. But let's not leave food-based illegal. Okay, okay, because... okay, okay, okay. All right, so, okay, I guess we weren't as free as I thought. We're not free to choke on bullcrap toys from Germany. All right, cheese, okay. There's a lot of cheese that needs to be banned. I covered a video about history of cheese and there's a lot of nasty freaking cheese out there that we don't need in our country, all right? Freedom or not, well, what do we got? Well, Americans remain deeply divided on a wide variety we of got, issues. Okay, we got Wisconsin. We got the Midwest making cheese. I think we're I think we're good on the cheese. There's one right? thing that most of us can agree on, and that's that life begins at cheese. <laughs> now, over the last 40 I mean, cheese years, is awesome. our love of cheese, much like our waistbands, has grown. Yeah. Between 1977 and 2020, we Americans have increased yeah, our annual really? cheese consumption from 16 pounds to 40 pounds every year. I'm not gonna lie, cheese can basically go on like 80% of things that you eat for dinner. You could probably have cheese with. I mean, think about it and I'm probably responsible for about half of that. So needless to say, we Americans love our cheese, whether it's on pizza, burgers, or in the form of 64 Jesus-infused slices of American cheese. Have you been up all night eating cheese? I think I'm blind. But if you're taking a cheese <laughs> tour of the world, be careful when Homer you is America. States, because your love of cheese might just put you in legal jeopardy. You guys enjoying that cheese? It's unpasteurized. It's illegal in this country. In fact, many oh, raw sauce. You know what? You know what though? Like, what's a better snack than seriously than just some cheese and crackers? That's such a good snack. I used to love that. Like after school, you get like a Ritz cracker and some cheese. You know, maybe you can put a little meat on it, like a little, little sandwich, kind of like a lunchable thing. Dude, top tier Top cheeses from snack. France, like Blue de Jex, Roquefort, or uh, Red Bluchon, are illegal in the United States due to the FDA's strict cheese production regulations. Under these rules, cheese well, you gotta learn about how it's made. pasteurized milk is illegal okay. to import or sell in the United States unless it has been aged for at least 60 days. Okay, there's some other things too, okay? Because some, here's some history for you. That's why you're here, right? There's these cheeses that are developed there like in Italy and stuff where they intentionally put, you know, like maggots or, you know, in it and it poops out inside the cheese, some other butt cheese. And it's like some kind of delicacy. We don't need that. We don't need that. I saw a video, too. That was like basically like birds. They like put birds in it and then it mixes and you got bird cheese it's disgusting we don't need that the reasoning is of course food safety namely to minimize we got wisconsin all right contagions like listeria salmonella and e coli and after 60 days the acids and salts in raw milk cheese coupled with the aging process begin to naturally kill these types of harmful bacteria but we don't want to die thing. okay Anyone who has ever been to France knows that the cheese is so, so much better. Oh, it's so true. And it's not just raw cheese. The FDA has also cracked out on certain cheeses. Just I'll be honest. I didn't. Even, I didn't, when I went to France, I didn't even need big, fancy French meals. I know they got good food. Dude, you just go get a baguette. They're cheap, a couple euro. And you get a little cup of cheese that they're going to have at the bakery. You dip that mother in the other thing. And you eat it, dude, delicious. It's all you need. I mean, even the locals do it. You'll see a businessman. He's got a suit. He's looking like John Krasinski going to whatever French people do for work. Uh, downtown Paris. And they just got the big old thing and they're dunking it. It's like even the locals are doing it. Too many live insects. That's the case with kazu marzu, See, and traditional uh, sardine. This is the stuff we don't cheese. need. Okay. It's intentionally infested with live maggots. Kazu marzu, which uh, literally means rotten Look at cheese, that. gets no. a special flavor from being left to rot out among swarms. That's not food. Of fly larvae. And you can't get out all. Okay. You can you get out? You can't get out the maggots. You're going to be eating maggots, right? Maggots are tiny. You're not getting all those out. You want to eat maggots? Jesus, you want that inside you? Delicious. It turns out that eating maggots is actually a tremendous health risk, earning the cheese oh, I wonder. the world's most dangerous cheese. And as a result, kazu marzu is not See, only illegal in the U.S., but good, in the though. entire European gooey. Union. But it's here's gross. the thing. Anyone who has ever been to Sardinia knows the maggot-filled cheese is Sardinia, just an so island. much better there.
But the French have also been on the receiving end of big government's anti-bug eating crusade. In 2013, the FDA angered American cheesophiles by blocking That's the cheese? import of French mimolette cheese. That's not cheese. Just because cheese. the cheese is naturally infested with cheese mites. Oh, and while gross. most cheesemakers consider the mites a nuisance, mimolette producers actually encourage the microscopic critters to burrow into the rind in order to help the cheese ripen and produce its distinctively sweet, earthy flavor. Mmm. Mighty. But the FDA has determined that eating too many mites could cause an allergic reaction, resulting in the ban of the Gouda-like cheese. And though the FDA Gouda has no limit I on love cheese Gouda. mites, the agency indicated a target of no more than six mites per square inch, which Mimolette simply <laughs> cannot meet. So what are the consequences? <laughs> we have our policy down to the mites the mites per square inch. I'm just not buying this. So I'm hoping going through this video, we're going to see all these things that are legal and illegal in the U S and I want to see if we, if we should be, cause like we're about freedom. If we should be able to, if we should, you know, have this stuff. Right. And I'm not buying the cheese thing. I think we're good on cheese. We got like the good ones that come from, from overseas and we're making it, I guess, safer. Maybe we could make it a little whatever and healthier, but like, I think our cheese game is fine. This is of contraband cheese. We got a tip about some food entering the country illegally? No, 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 no. Oh, well, the man. The failure to no, declare food products on your customs forms can result in fines of up to $10,000, and your unlawful cheese will be seized. But be forewarned, <laughs> there is a thriving black market for cheese in the United States. Uh, did you guys know, okay, this was passed, I think, by the Truman administration. Uh, it's called Cheese Cops. Okay, they'll come, they'll lock you up. You don't want to mess with the Cheese Cops. You go to cheese jail. Dates and illegal cheese is very much on the government's radar. The Department of Homeland Security, you know, the post 9 11 agency responsible for protecting the country from terrorism and kinder eggs, yeah. has helped bust Bad cheese, cheese is terrorism. into Canada. But unless you're a large scale cheese smuggler, you're probably not looking at any. Dude, Canada, you're right wow, by Wisconsin. Been, you got me. Good one. Get Making some me cheese. Think I was going to like die in federal prison. And, ah, that's super funny. <laughs> you scamps. So, worst case scenario, yeah. you're probably looking at a fine and suffering the on way of eating your dry cheeseless crackers alone but let's yeah leave you gotta the food get cheese world we got into... lawn darts no i've played lawn darts there's nothing freer than a fourth of july and some lawn something darts. that probably makes what a is this bit more sense now a source of pride for the baby boomer generation is that everything was dangerous and no one seemed to care wait are they banned yes, now an era where we lined our walls with cancerous asbestos Medical professionals Gross. smoked in hospitals, and people sold chemistry sets to children that contained real. Yeah, we well, were pretty uranium. stupid so in the fifties. So, of course, 50s. as a society, we used to let kids hurl giant darts into the air with impunity and call it a. Fifties is rough, right? We're coming back from World War II. All right, ego is very big. We think we're invincible. Soldiers are coming back, addicted to drugs, and they're all smokers now. And then we're giving kids what mercury so they can do pretend doctor stuff. Oh, and segregation pastime. That's the story of lawn darts, which have been illegal in the United States since 1988 after what? being linked to thousands of injuries and the deaths of at least three children. What? I've played those since 1988, okay? I've played those. The, the lawn dart police did not come to some barbecues I've been to, and you go and huck those? I mean, come on. Come on. Come on, America. We're banning them? How about just show some discretion? I mean, we got darts anyways and stuff. We're going to ban just anything sharp. 88 after being linked to thousands of injuries. That actually looks really fun. At least three children. Long it's only darts, 595. Known as javelin darts or jarts, was a popular yeah, long game in the mid 20th century. Fun. Gameplay was actually quite straightforward. Players would take turns tossing giant darts into a circle placed about yeah. 35 feet away, all a cornhole. But with giant. Okay, it's, all right, cornhole. Okay, it's a little degenerate, all right? It's a little degenerate. No one's getting hurt in corn, cornhole. And now, I get it. This is like barbecue. You know, you have it at the barbecue. Dudes are probably drunk. I could guess I could see how people are going to get hurt a lot more than, you know, cornhole. But come on. It's razor sharp darts raining down from the sky. Not that sharp. Of soft bean bags. Now, unfortunately, throwing a giant metal dart is a tremendous safety hazard, and government regulators eventually began to take notice. This isn't child's play, according to the Food and Drug Administration. Food and drug? The food and drug is getting into this? This isn't food, and it's not drugs. Are they just like 
the, the Karens of society, the overprotective mommies. Are we are we actually in the nanny Attempts state? To outlaw the game was strenuously posed by Jart manufacturers who fought the proposed FDA ban in court. In 1970, manufacturers actually yeah, Hasbro or something that would allow the sale pissed. of Bondart so long as it was one only marketed to adults. Then two, the product was no longer sold in toy stores, and three, the product contained warning labels alerting consumers to keep it That's out fair. of the reach of children. That's fair. But unfortunately, these compromise measures were insufficient to prevent tragedy for aerospace engineers. Oh my gosh, it's always that. Okay. Okay. Well, how one grieving father got lawn darts banned. You didn't supervise your kids or whatever. Or you were drunk or whatever. It was your fault, and you feel like for some kind of restitution, you're gonna bring it down on all of us. One person ruining it. It's literally a male Karen. What's a male Karen? A Kevin? No. Who is this In guy? In April 1987, Snow's seven-year-old daughter, Michelle, was killed by a David? lawn dart thrown. David Snow. Literally, no fun having I'm sorry. I, I mean, okay, I'm sorry your daughter got hurt, okay? But holy cow. Playmates and your, your daughter died. Their home in Riverside, California. The dart hit her head with approximately 23,000 pounds of pressure per square inch, and Snow's daughter died three days later. The grieving father that, then I mean, that's tragic, to lobby but... public officials to take lawn darts off the market for good. Snow brought his complaint to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, who were persuaded to investigate Snow's claims. The commission discovered that over a period of eight years, lawn darts had sent 6,100 people to the emergency room. <laughs> 81% of those cases involved kids aged 15 or younger, half were 10 or younger, and many had suffered permanent an injury, disability, or even death. So here's the thing. This is definitely user error. I guarantee none of these were injuries of people playing normal. It's someone screwing around, right? Totally screwing around. Young people unsupervised, right? User error. In 1988, Snow prevailed. In Want my lawn state. darts back. The commission voted two to one to prohibit the sale of all lawn darts uh, and had them removed from What's stores. What's the definition of a lawn dart? That year's Christmas. And Canada also outlawed lawn darts in July of 1989. Now, if you want to <laughs> oh play my traditional gosh. lawn Look at that. That is a lawn dart through the eyeball into the medulla oblongata. Darts, you'll something. have to hop on a plane and visit the European Union where the game is still legal. But here in the U.S., you can find a legal version uh, with a modified oh, boring. plastic tip that replaces the sharp metal tip. Because uh, that makes uh, quite a lot more sense. I mean, we're, we're doing that now. You guys have noticed all the playgrounds suck now, right? I don't know. When I was a kid, you played on the giant... You had giant swings and you landed in gravel and it dug into your your leg. You had a big old metal slide that it was hot as heck and you're and you'd rip off your skin. Like you had all that dangerous stuff and now they're now they're lame. But that takes man. us to something that's arguably flavored even more cigarettes smoking. and clothes. Now for most of the twentieth century, Why? cigarette smoking was glorified as the ultimate embodiment of the American West. Things like tough guys, rebels without a cause. In advertising, doctors endorsed their favorite brands, while we were told that women found smoking men irresistible. Shh. But this image of health and sex appeal slowly began to change starting in nineteen sixty four after the US Surgeon General stated definitively that yes, smoking tobacco can be fatal. And research shows right. that flavored cigarettes largely appeal to and are disproportionately used by those under 18 years of age. Okay, so now I'm wondering, okay, how did vapes make it through? Because those have all kinds of flavors and they're fruity and stuff like that. Like, how did that make it through? I remember this, Bobby, he got caught smoking and his dad said, all right, you're going to smoke all, like a whole carton, and he got, he got That sick. is not how to inhale, Bobby. You're hot boxing it. So to help combat youth smoking in 2009, the That's FDA like season banned the sale one. of flavored cigarettes, including cloves, cinnamon, candy, and fruit flavors, pursuant to the Family Smoking Prevention and Control Act. Though menthol cigarettes were exempted from the ban, as well as non-cigarette tobacco products like electronic cigarettes, cigars, smokeless tobacco, and hookah. But the U.S. is not mm -hmm. alone here, as countries with policies banning some or all types of flavored cigarettes include Canada, Brazil, Ethiopia, Uganda, Senegal, Niger, Mauritania, I want to make sure and 28 smoking member still states of the European as Union, gross Moldova, as possible. Turkey, and Singapore. As for everyone else, well, not only are flavored cigarettes completely legal in the vast majority of countries, but the U.S. ban on cloves actually created an international incident. In April what? 2010, Indonesia, the world's Great top clove user war? of clove cigarettes, and the source of the vast majority of those smoked in the U.S., filed a trade dispute with the World Trade Organization. In its claim, huh. Indonesia argued that the 
U.S. ban illegally discriminated against foreign products of flavored tobacco and created an unlawful advantage for domestic tobacco manufacturers. In September Okay, that's interesting. So World, Tra World Trade Organization. A whole bunch of war uh, organizations created after World War II. Try to make more fair trade, reduce conflicts economically, right? You got a whole bunch of these things. You got the IM, uh, International Monetary Fund. Um, you've got the World Bank, you know, all those things. So World Trade Organization, that's kind of interesting. So you say it's an unfair trade practice. So Indonesia obviously grows a lot of that stuff. But here's the thing. I, 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 I don't this obviously would never work like as a lawsuit or whatever. The WTO agreed, finding that the ban was indeed discriminatory <laughs> because it prohibited clove cigarettes while Pardon. allowing the sale of American menthol cigarettes. The opinion was affirmed on appeal in 2012. This ruling gave Indonesia the right to retaliate until either the U.S. changed its law to comply or the two sides reached <laughs> a settlement. Thanks, Obama. And in 2014, the two countries reached a final settlement on the issue, ending their dispute. Under the settlement, the U.S. agreed it would not arbitrarily discriminate against certain Indonesian tobacco products and promised to work with Indonesia on other trade issues. Oh, so they capitulated a little bit. They compromised. The tobacco ban, public health advocates seem to have been vindicated. A 2020 study published the Journal of Adolescent Health found that the flavor ban was effective at reducing cigarette use among young people. Hmm. In April of 2022, the FDA took additional steps against flavored tobacco products by proposing a ban on the sales of menthol cigarettes and all flavored cigars. In his proposal, the FDA argued that these actions had the potential to reduce disease and death by, quote, reducing youth experimentation and addiction and increasing the number of smokers that quit. It kind of seems like this, though, like you almost have to go all in, though, like into into smoking and these addictive behaviors right you get this like little tiny part of this market right you already have laws that that uh kids can't buy you know cigarettes and and you know all that stuff but it's like it still doesn't address the whole issue right i guess it's protect the kids or something like that but does that mean that kids just went to other things, so it says significantly reduce tobacco-related disease and death. Public comments Whatever. will continue through July of 2022, but... What do you think about that? Your surprise, eggs are already banned, so the hard work has already been accomplished. But that takes... See, the thing is, like, vape. More younger kids, like, are vaping. Like, as a high school teacher, I can tell you this. More, like, teenage kids are vaping than smoking cigarettes, right? Like, than they ever have. Like, vaping is a big deal for young uh, people uh, we're always busting kids in the schools that they're already addicted to it and they bring it into school that is way bigger than I ever seen have ever seen with cloves or anything like that like vaping is a big issue for uh, for young to kids the next American illegality something it's you easier to get into than um, cigarettes day. now if you were an American <laughs> jaywalking in, in 19 okay I do got to say okay jaywalking can be very bad all right like other countries, yeah, I guess people just walking wherever they want and stuff. We also remember in the United States, we have huge wide roads, right? You go to Europe, a place where, you know, cities were built long before cars, very narrow, right? Very narrow um, and lower speeds, right? So like jaywalking in the United States could be huge because you got such wide large roads there crossing the street was a very are we reducing endeavor. freedom here if you wanted to cross the street you would just walk across the street before the introduction of cars roads were seen as a public space that all citizens had a right to occupy even children at play you just avoided but the today, kids if you try and cross the street without using a crosswalk or cross the street when the traffic light is flashing do not walk well congratulations you have committed the crime of jaywalking. Yep. Now, across the pond, some of our European allies have taken a more laissez-faire attitude towards jaywalking by making it totally legal. They just call it walking. Now, for example, <laughs> there are no laws against jaywalking in Norway. The same goes for the UK, meaning that the Beatles didn't need to use the crosswalk for their famous Abbey Road cover. And the Netherlands used to have laws against jaywalking, but repealed these look at that road. in 1995. See, look how tiny these are. The code. I mean, it's interesting. I don't know. Like... Is this making some things are going through my mind? Is this making driving safer in other countries? Because since you're a driver and you're already on smaller roads anyway, so speed limits are going to be lower if you're in a place like here in Europe. And if you know that there are going to be jaywalkers, are you naturally then going to drive slower, be more attentive? And because of that, there's going to be reduced fatalities and injuries. If you're interested to compare that with those jaywalking states or uh, countries and compare it to our injuries that we get even though we have j anti-jaywalking laws 
Anybody got that data? Maybe he'll bring it up. And give pedestrians more freedom. In these countries, your right to cross the street freely shall not be infringed. But here in the United States, we've taken a more punitive approach to walking. Now, every year, cities like Los Angeles issue tickets to tens of thousands of pedestrians. Do those ever, okay. Which includes fines. I was wondering if those uh, ever actually get handed out. But this was not always the case. In fact, ticketing someone for jaywalking is a relatively young concept in the United right. States. According to University of Virginia historian Peter Norton, the notion of jaywalking, with jay being an early 20th century slur for someone stupid or unsophisticated, was introduced by a group of auto <laughs> Let's bring it back. groups in the 1920s as part Jaywalker. of a concerted pro-car, anti-pedestrian propaganda camp. So it seems like a thing that to enforce something like that, you'd have to have cops that that's their job, right? Like, that's their job. I can't imagine some, you know, cop, I don't know, on patrol in their car or something's going to, like, go and stop and get out and all that stuff. It seems like, again, it'd be very hard to enforce. Campaign. But when cars but were first it's still on the books. Were crosswalks painted on the street, pedestrians generally ignored the ones that existed because they didn't need to. But as cars became more widely available, pedestrian deaths skyrocketed, with hundreds of thousands of Americans, many children, being killed in car crashes for the first few decades of the 20th century. So to mm. counter all this negative publicity, auto industries sought to enact traffic laws that would shift blame from drivers and their cars to the pedestrians themselves. And it worked. Not only did cities and states begin criminalizing jaywalking, but the US oh, government gosh. supported the anti-pedestrian propaganda campaign by ridiculing jaywalkers <laughs> and placing blame on them for automobile crashes. And today, some criminal justice advocates believe jaywalking should be decriminalized altogether. But as an aside, you should all go watch not just bikes. See, and that's what, yeah, see, that's so saying that's, we got to get. Be decriminalized altogether. But as an aside, you should all go watch not just bikes and get orange pilled because it's kind of stupid that we've ceded all of this real estate to cars for both driving and parking when cities should be for the people themselves. But uh, I am glad like cities are getting more bikeable. But let's remember in general, United States cities are not walking friendly. There are a very small handful of cities. And what I mean by that is uh, more densely populated areas, right? That like they're they're no, we're not walkable. We're not walkable cities. Again, this is this is the result of so much of our country developing post industrialization, meaning post car, that we are a car culture. Right. We have this massive country and, you know, <laughs> and that's another issue because we have horrible um, transportation infrastructure um, and public transit and stuff like that. We're just we're not a walkable culture and jaywalking, I guess, proves it <laughs> as uh, something banning it. I'll get down off of my we're banning box. walkability. And, well, it might sound counterintuitive. Countries that allow jaywalking tend to have lower traffic deaths as pedestrians tend to cross more safely and when they aren't worried about criminal penalties. That's what I was wondering. Literally, Kay just said that those free places you can jaywalk are going to have fewer accidents. Now, again, that's that. There's a lot of other variable, variables there, like I said, about smaller streets, slower cars, um, that kind of thing. But it does make sense that you would um, that you would probably be more alert as a driver. And, of course, as a pedestrian, um, you're going to have to be very aware. Now, something interesting, too, is you think about, like, how distracted we are. We're on our phones and stuff, right? So we got, we're on our phones and, you know, we're distracted by that. So we, you know, walk into walk into something. But, yeah, there's a lot of variables, of course, with this. And criminal justice advocates point out that jaywalking laws have a very disparate impact. You know, there, there's a similar argument I've heard about like American football, right? American football, very, you know, a lot of injuries, right? And there's an argument that's made that one of the reasons you have injuries is not just the nature of the game, but we pad people up, right? We pad people up. And because of that, they are, you're more likely to do things that can cause injuries to others because you're there. Um, and it doesn't hurt you as much if you're going to lay a hit or something like that. But if you weren't, Okay, all, all armored up that you wouldn't hit in certain ways and you would tackle, uh, you know, more safely. So I'd be interested to see like, okay, like sport like rugby or Australian rules football comparing the injury rates with that because they're high contact sports. But American football, you have pads and then in rugby and Aussie rules football, you don't have that. So um, I wonder if, if that's a similar thing, um, the, the, the conception tickets there. not evenly applied and enforcement disproportionately targeting people of color.
So far in 2021, Virginia has heeded this call by becoming the first and so far only state to decriminalize jaywalking. And a similar bill to decriminalize jaywalking was vetoed by California's uh, Governor Gavin Newsom in 2021. So for better or worse, if you want to- It would definitely cause narrow, crap. Um, you could see it, it would definitely, it, it could cause traffic issues too. Can you imagine like, hey, you have jaywalking, somebody's driving a car. We already have a horrible, um, you know, um, uh, distracted driver thing, right? We're on our phones you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden the car in front of you has to stop for a jaywalker. That's more amount of times a car has to be ready to stop than maybe distracted. All of a sudden you hit the back of that car in front of you could cause more accidents too. Um, if you just allow jaywalking of the U S states, oh, no. you'd better be sure to look both ways and stay in the crosswalk every time for now. All right. So what do you think? Is the United States not as free as we most arrogantly pro, uh, pronounce to the rest of the world? Are these laws that you think should be reversed in our country, in the United States? If you're from another country, what do you think about these? Maybe you live in one of these places where these things are legal. Is it an issue? Are we the dumb ones? I don't know. Let us know. All right. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye.